I just like to remind everyone that next week you will have your exam. So if you go into your canvas, you're going to your course guide. So you're going to see at the schedule there that you will have your first exam on October 14 at 7 p.m. So I think all, all, all CAM 18 students will take the exam all at the same time at 7 p.m. during that time. And the coverage for that is modules one and two. So what we're going to do starting today, we're going to cover module four. So I'm just going to have a short meeting with you uh, talking about the intermolecular forces of attraction. And then I will leave it up to you to be the material that there's a lot of them on Thursday. So we have a short twist later today. And then you will have a short, uh, another twist on Thursday, just to make sure you read the material. Okay. And then we'll meet again on uh, uh, Tuesday next week to see if you still have any question about module four. And then we will uh, review, or if you have any question in anticipation for your first exam, uh, first lecture exam, we're going to meet on Thursday next week. Okay, Bayon? Yes, sir. Okay. So today I will just use a whiteboard to discuss about the intermolecular forces of attraction. But before we discuss the intermolecular forces of attraction, okay, maybe we can sort of review the three physical states. So what's the three physical states that we have? Solid liquid, solid liquid, liquid gas. liquid gas. So solid, liquid, and gas. And they say the best way to differentiate the three is by comparing the shape and volume. Okay? So that's the easiest way to differentiate the three physical states. Okay? You compare the shape and the volume that they have. So if you're going to look at the solid, in terms of shape and volume, what can you say? Definite shape and definite okay. volume. So both of them are definite. Okay. Now for the liquid, what can you say about the liquid? Indefinite shape. Definite so the only one that's definite is? the volume or the shape, it's not definite. It assumes the shape of the container, okay? Now, when you go to the gas, what can you say about the gas? Both okay. indefinite. Both of them are not definite, okay? So that's, that's the... Uh, Simple ways to differentiate solid, liquid, and gas. Now, if you're going to look at this, solid and liquid usually has, they have definite shape and definite volume compared to the gas. So if we're going to look at the reason why they exhibit this thing, it's related to our topic today, which is IMF. Okay? So if you're going to look at the difference between the three, I would say the distance between the atoms or the molecules is the main reason why they have definite shape or definite volume, okay? So for solid, for instance, they're close to one another. So if they're close to one another, okay, they are arranged in a fixed position. So in that case, what will happen is, okay, they will have definite shape, okay? Now, 
the definite shape that they have there results also in a definite volume. Now, compared to the liquid, liquid are what? Their, their atoms and molecules are a little bit far from one another, resulting to a shape wherein they assume the shape of the container. But they still have IMFA that hold the atoms or molecules together to assume a definite volume. Now, if you're going to look at the gas, whose behavior is described by what theory? Kinetic molecular. Okay, so the kinetic molecular theory describes the behavior of the gas molecule. Okay, so if you're going to go look at the gas molecule, they're far from one another. You can put molecules in between them, making gases compressible, okay? And as what the KMP said, okay, uh, gas molecules, because of the big space, uh, large empty space in between them, they move at random motion. And if they collide with one another, the collision is elastic. So there's no IMFA that hold them together. Okay, so the presence of the IMFA, what's differentiate the solid and the liquid from the gas? Now, IMFA is what we call the forces that hold molecules together. So if you're going to look at this, this is what? Intermolecular. So this is different from intramolecular. Okay, we have discussed already intramolecular forces. What are they? What's the other name for them? Anyone? Any other name for intramolecular? Covalent bonds. They're what we call the bonding. Okay, so to, to look at the difference between the two. So when we're talking about intermolecular, so if you have a water molecule, it's the forces of one water molecule and another water molecule. So if they're close to one another, they're liquid. If they're closer, far, uh, close further than one another, they're got a lot of solid. But what happened? Okay, if you want to break the IMFA that hold water together, your liquid becomes gas. So the energy that you need to break the water molecule that hold them together as liquid, okay, it's much less compared to the intramolecular wherein what are you going to break? The bond that connect hydrogen with oxygen, okay? So if you're going to ask which is stronger, intermolecular or intramolecular? Which needs high energy to break this type of interaction, okay? So intramolecular is always stronger, okay? Now, intermolecular uh, forces of attraction affects what we call the bulk properties of a given substance, okay? And usually the nature of the IMFA dictates the bulk properties that you have. I don't know if you notice it. So if you have what, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, what can you say about them? They are all what? Diatomic. They are all uh, diatomic gases, but uh, diatomic are uh, what we call the molecule. But if you're going to look at them in terms of physical properties, this is what? Gas, gas, liquid, solid. Now you may ask the question, why? Okay, so IMFA has something to do with it. So what we're going to talk about today is just the three uh, types of IMFA that we have.
So the first one is the London dispersion forces. Now the London dispersion process is present in all molecules. And it is the only one that is present in nonpolar molecules. So you have to remember your knowledge here in uh, the previous module, polarity. What is polar and what is nonpolar molecules? So London dispersion process, we're going to look at this. This is after, named after Fritz London, the one who studied them, the so-called Van der Waals force, okay? So London dispersion forces look at the dispersion of electron within atom, okay, within a molecule. So what's the nature of an atom? An atom always have what? A nucleus and anyone? An atom always have a nucleus and I know. Okay, an atom would always have a nucleus and electron. So what is the nature of electron? They're always what? Moving. Negative. Okay, they're always moving, they're negative. So in their movement, what will happen if you have a nonpolar substance? There's an even distribution, but in the movement of the electron, it will go on one side, inducing itself, forcing the other electron on the neighboring atom to also move on the other side. Just try to look at this as a domino effect. So when this happens, there's a dispersion that is happening. And the larger the molecule, the larger is the dispersion forces. Now remember, LDF is present in all molecules. So the bigger the molecules, the stronger is the IMFA. And that's the explanation why you see the behavior of these diatomic molecules. Okay? As you go from left to right here, your molecules become larger. They have a high molecular weight, right? Or we could say a bigger atom, okay? So that is what we call LDF. Now, another thing that they have is the so-called dipole-dipole force, or I think here they put it dipole-dipole forces, DDF. So they are the one present in what? Polar. Polar molecules. Now the polar molecules, they'll still have what we call LDF. As I told you, LDF is present in everything. But Whenever you have a polar molecules, the dipole-dipole forces is the one that is dominating. Why do we call it dipole? Do you remember our no lecture? So usually we have, let's say, HCl. So we move it like this. So there's a partially negative and then a partially positive and making it a dipole. So. Whenever we have a polar molecule, you expect the dipole dipole to be present. Now, if you're asked uh, which is stronger between a dipole dipole and an LDF, the answer is it depends. Okay. In terms of differences in molar mass, if the difference is smaller, the one that are polar or the one that contains the dipole dipole is more stronger or stronger. But if there's a difference that is wide among these uh, what we call molar mass, there's a chance wherein the LDF is much stronger than the, the one that has the dipole dipole. I think I emphasize it in my lecture, in my recorded slide. The case of the oil and water, right? Were you able to watch the thing? Well, I can always have it in Filipino. Yung tinatawag natin, tubig at langis. <laughs> so alin yung mas mataas yung, or alin yung mas mas strong yung IMFA doon? Sa oil at sa water. Anyone? 
Oil. Oil. But what is the oil? If you're going to look at oil, it is what? Non-polar, right? So pag non-polar, LDF lang siya. Compare sa water na meron, yung last one, yung tinatawag natin hydrogen bonding. But the oil has a stronger IMFA compared with water because it has a higher boiling point compared to water. And the main reason there is the high molecular weight that it has. Okay? Now, the last one that we have here is H bond. So H bond is a special type of IMFA when hydrogen is bonded to any of the uh, strong electronegative atoms. Now, in some book, they have the SCL. Okay? In some book, they include P. Okay? But the classical book, they have an N no F. So what does it mean? So all you need to see if, if you see hydrogen in between any of these most electronegative atoms. So what is the objective, at least, of this module? One objective of this module is for you to identify the IMFA that is present and how it affects the bulk properties of a given molecule. So when you have hydrogen bond, it is an unusual strong IMFA, best exemplified by water. If you're going to compare water with H2S, H2SE, and H2TE, if you're going to plot the boiling point that you have, you will have like a plot that is like a Nike. So this is water, this is H2S, this is H2E, and this is uh, the H2SE, and this is H2TE. And the main reason there is because of the hydrogen bonding of water. Okay? And if you're asked, which has a higher vapor pressure? Acetone or water? Which has high vapor pressure? Anyone? Hello? Acetone. Okay, so acetone is the one that has a high vapor pressure. When we're talking about vapor pressure, ability to leave the liquid phase and go to the gas phase. So when you form into a gas phase, you have the vapor that is formed. Okay? You call it the vapor pressure because that vapor is in gas form. It will exer uh, exhibit or exert pressure. Okay? Now, the IMFA has a role here. So you could say, what are the IMFA present in acetone? Anyone? Ano, ano IMFA present sa acetone? You always have LDF. You also have dipole dipole. Dipole dipole. Do you have H band there? May H band ba dyan? Wala. So sa water, meron kang LDF, meron kang dipole-dipole, at meron kang h bond. Now the question, can you for, can acetone form h bond with water? Yes or no? Hmm? Can acetone form h bond with a water molecule? So if I'm going to do it, so you can see here, your hydrogen is sandwiched between two electronegative atoms, which is oxygen. So it can form an H bond with water molecule, but not with itself. Okay, so that's all that I'm going to tell you today. Question before I open the quiz. Tano? Metano? 
Hello. Class? Excuse me po, sir. Mm. For the hydrogen bonding po, will we be using po the SCL and the sulfur chlorine and phosphorus or just the NOF? I would say just stick with the NOF. Okay, po, sir. Thank you. Some book has not uh, was reported, reported them yet. So question? Do you see the quiz now? So I have there until what? This is 12.59? Come on, back. Yep. Oh, shoot. Mali. Pinano ko ngayon. October 3. When it should be October 4. So, kita niyo na yung quiz? Yes, ma'am. So, any more questions? Before we call it a week. <laughs> so, we'll not meet on Thursday, but you're going to uh, do the uh, whatever's being asked on some module. Okay? Uh, hindi kita yung hawa kong module. And then on Monday, if you have any question clarification, we will go over them. Okay? So, may tanong pa po?